You've heard uh, these shipping containers that are tied up, some 3,000 shipping containers tied up in the main port in Puerto Rico. Uh, we recently heard from the mayor of San Juan saying that she wishes she could uh, essentially open the gates and get those shipping containers to where they need to go, but she doesn't have jurisdiction over the ports. Another problem is actually getting truckers to go pick those containers up and take them to where they are needed. Uh, one issue is communication. Uh, cellular service is spotty at best, so communicating with those truckers is difficult. Uh, fuel is another big problem, in part because not every gas station is operational. Many that are don't have electricity, so people need cash to be able to pay for gas. Many banks and ATMs are shut down, in part because there is no electricity. It is a gridlock of problems, and officials tell us that they are doing the best that they can to deal with them. But here on the ground, we are hearing again and again from people that they are not seeing the help that they need. Many people asking us, where is FEMA? I spoke with a father a short while ago, a father of three, who told me that uh, one of his children was asking for milk earlier, and it drew him into a deep, deep pain because he knew that milk wouldn't be getting to him anytime soon, John and Poppy. Laura Sanchez there in San Juan, thank you so much. How long is it going to be until those 9,500 containers just sitting there with these vital supplies are actually released from the port and sent to the victims of Hurricane Maria? CNN spoke to the general manager of a shipping company trying to find out more about what's going on. Listen to this. We currently have um, approximately 3,000 containers full of uh, emergency um, supplies, relief cargo. There's all kind of goods, commercial materials, um, construction materials as well, medicines and everything, and all kind of goods. Um, food, there's a lot of food in these containers. There's also reefers that are filled of, of, of food as well, frozen poultry as an example, pork and others. Um, and so far, our terminal is completely up to its capacity, maximum capacity, and we have been able to dispatch um, barely 4% of um, our usual flow at our exit gates. The problem has been with the, with the logistics, the part of the supply chain that moves the cargo from our terminal to the shelves or to the tables of the people of Puerto Rico. Now, for those employees who have been able to get to their workplace and for those trucking companies, as an example, they have their equipment available and ready, then they're facing the challenge of, of the fact that there's no fuel. So if you have the equipment, you have the drivers, but you don't have the fuel, then you uh, definitely cannot afford to move the cargo. If this continues on, if we're not able to start dispatching cargo, there's not going to be sufficient space to unload our next barges that are in line to, to come to the port. And this is stuff that's coming from FEMA and from private companies, from the government? Where is it all coming from? It's all around. Uh, um, there's emergency supplies. There's relief cargo from FEMA. There's um, food for, for DCs here in Puerto Rico, um, all supermarkets. I mean, you name it. That is very sad and frustrating for whatever reasons that that we have plenty of inventory in our ports. There's enough to supply the needs. It's just a matter, again, how do we move them to the final destination?